Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Wonderla Holidays Limited Q1 FY23 earnings conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Adi Dev Chattopadhyay. Thank you and over to you sir. Yeah, good evening everyone. On behalf of ICICI Securities, I'd like to welcome everyone today to the Wonderla Holidays Limited uh, Q1 FY23 call. Uh, from the management as always we have with us Mr. Arun Chittila Pilli, the managing director, and Mr. Satish Sheshatri, the chief financial officer. uh i would like to congratulate the management for a great quarter and now like to hand over the floor to them for their opening remarks over to you uh thank you uh thank you for that introduction uh good afternoon everyone and thank you for joining us this is arun the managing director of the company uh let me say that uh, you know the first quarter is uh, like a milestone quarter for us as we seen a blockbuster uh, results after like almost 2 years of the pandemic um it gives us a lot of confidence that you know we're going to come more stronger um after the pandemic um this quarter has also proven that uh, you know uh, our customers uh, and generally people in general are willing to go out and experiment with outdoor activities and fun and um, you know so that's a strong business uh, proposition for us as a result we have witnessed the highest ever quarterly revenue ebitda pack uh, since inception Uh, we have uh, experienced some uh, truly phenomenal footfalls, um, growing by some 25, 24% compared to FY20, our last normal pre-pandemic quarter. Uh, now we are entering a new dawn of value creation and growth ahead of us. Uh, the financial highlights coming to the financial numbers for the quarters: we um, registered revenues of 150 cro- 152 crores, uh, clocking in a growth of 26% when compared to. Um, Uh, the 121 core Hello Sarun Yeah Oh yes sir I I we lost your audio in between Yeah okay Yeah so our um, re- revenues have been at 152 crores uh clocking a growth of 26% compared to 121 crores in Q1 FY20 our ebitda has grown by 30% to 94 crores compared to 72 crores for the same period in FY20 our margin is at 62% and pat for Q1 FY23 stood at 64 crores growing by 53% compared to 42 crores in Q1 FY20 uh operation uh, operating highlights uh demand for leisure activities has resumed with a vengeance as you as you all know our customers continue to view wonderla as a great way to spend a day of leisure and providing this through their surging footfalls and each sequential quarter um we also have uh, uh, had an outstanding performance from our resort division we had almost uh, more than 80% occupancy the highest ever that we've done we've also uh, seen um footfall growth across all the parks uh, some while some portion of these footfalls could be attributed to pent up demand a great part is also come from um, uh, also from a fundamental demand which continues every year and supported by compelling events and strategic marketing uh, marketing activation initiatives that we have implemented to drive demand these measures and our continuous focus on customer centricity has contributed to some these numbers uh we also high uh, focused on special events and plans um during all quarters in the last two years and uh, some of these uh, um included our dj events rhythm night um summer fiesta holy those kind of things secondly we also offered special park plus um, uh, offerings and some some of the new rides also we launched in has attracted leisure seekers we have implemented a lot of innovative marketing um, uh, campaign mostly digital to encourage walk in and group based footfalls 
these initiatives have la- reached to a large number of uh, customers and built a strong demand for us and with very less marketing costs. Backed by all these efforts, we have uh, collected footfall of roughly about 11.18 lakhs in Q1 compared to 8.99 lakhs in Q1 FI20. These strong numbers we have crossed all pre-COVID markers for foot uh, for footfalls, and I'm very happy to say that we are uh, moving in the right direction. We have uh, two new uh, two projects, as uh, you may know. Uh, we have. I'm pleased to inform that uh, uh, we have signed an MOU with the uh, Orissa government for the development of an, uh, an amusement park in the state capital city of Bhubaneswar. For this development, we have leased uh, 50. Point uh, six acres of land for 90 years in the Kumar Basta village within Khorda district of Bhuvaneshwar. We are planning to develop this project with an investment of uh, less than 125 crores. And uh, this uh, will be done through internal accruals. Um, this should uh, ultimately expand our top line and bottom line. The other project that we have is Chennai, and that has been put on hold for now. I mean, it's not on hold. It's just that we are waiting for the government to revert uh, for on our request of um, waiving LBT tax uh, for our project. Uh, we are uh, reasonably sure that this will happen, but we don't know the timeline. So it could happen in this quarter. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you all for your continued support. Uh, look forward to seeing you at our parks and uh, uh, do uh, we'll go to the question answer session. Thank you very much. We will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Thank you. We take the first question from the line of TVK Vivek Kumar from Best Pass Research. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Arun. Uh, uh, great to see superb members. So, first question is uh, this Chennai thing, uh, if at all we get the permission, uh, how many years will it take and how do you finance? And the second one is can we repeat these kind of numbers this year or how much of it is revenue and how much of it is attributable to your marketing and uh, increased uh, uh, whatever sales efforts that you are doing at your end? And uh, uh, how I'm, I know you can't predict next year, but assuming that no COVID and all these things are out of the way in terms of uh, uh, outdoor thing. Are you sure that we can grow these numbers even by small amounts in terms of footfalls with our marketing efforts? So thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think uh, we can grow this business uh, quite a bit. Like I've always said that we, uh, we expect at least 1 million per park per uh, year. And so we've not reached that number yet. Yeah, so I think there is definitely headroom for all of our parks to grow. Uh, if you see our football numbers, the growth of uh, Cochin and Hyderabad have shown almost 38 or 39 percent growth in football, whereas Bangalore has shown, I think, uh, 12 percent or 15 percent. I'm not sure of the exact number, but um, this, this shows that you know we've not still not reached that um, one million mark per uh, per park. So I think there's def- definitely a lot of end group. Chennai project, uh, if we are, uh, if we uh, you know, if we get all the approvals done, I think we should be able to start next year. And uh, we will do most of the work with our internal accruals, and we might take some debt down. And uh, sorry to uh, say, as the same question, your comment that your marketing efforts, uh, is there anything else that you are thinking in terms of uh, what you can do to increase your footfall? Because that was a problem for the last decade, if you our uh, parts across our parts. No, I think our parts are running full pretty much the first quarter. We, I don't think we could have had more footballs than this. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's very, I mean, we were running pretty much full throughout, uh, especially May. We were completely sold out. Uh, May, Maybe in June we can have a little more footballs in the following year. So I think uh, growing on top of this footfall for next year, I don't know how, how much we can grow, but we'll see. 
uh, we will have to uh, look at maybe price hikes, which are already planning to do. And uh, but I think yeah, for our existing parks, I think we are we are in a very good place. Okay, thanks, thanks, and uh, uh, all the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Aditya Shah from Vikram Advisory Services. Go ahead, sir. Congratulations, Arun, on the good set of numbers. Uh, my Thank questions you. are regarding uh, two, three things, which is uh, what is our expected uh, free cash flow that uh, we plan to generate for the next this year or probably coming two, three years? Um, and uh, second is regarding, uh, let's say, if we are not taking any debt uh, for the Chennai project or, uh, sorry, not raising any capital uh, for the Chennai project or uh, the Odisha project, uh, do we have any plans uh, for raising any capital in the next two, three years? Uh, because, you know, our outlay would be around 400 crores. That's what I think. Um, and the third point is that, you know, the last ROE of 15% we touched probably in 2015 or 16. Uh, uh, do you think that going forward we would be able to, uh, you know, maintain an ROE between 15 and 18% uh, in the future? Or, uh, you know, once it touches 15, 18, and then we go down again because of the capex, and then we go up again? Or when do you think? We, we uh, don't look at, uh, we don't look at a, uh, the ROE in that sense, uh, because this is a very high cap, heavy, uh, capex heavy investment. So, uh, you know, we don't look, we don't have a benchmark number like this. Uh, but I think we are happy with, uh, you know, uh, anything more than, um, uh, 12%. And uh, I think um, Satish can give more uh, this thing on the numbers. Uh, I will uh, take one by one, sir. Uh, hmm. First one is on the uh, cash generation. See, in a year we generate about uh, under cross cash, okay, uh, on the uh, surplus, on the EBITDA side. And uh, for the investments in uh, Kochi, uh, for the investments in uh, Bhuvaneshwar and Chennai Park, Okay, we will be requiring a total investment of 125 crores for Orissa and about 220 crores for uh, Chennai if we have to go ahead with the... And board. over a two and a half year, year period. Also. Over a two years year. period. So okay. in that two years, we will generate about 200 crores and we have a cash surplus now in form of investment and cash about 200 crores. So we will, we will try to do as much possible with internal accruals on the investment front. This is number two. Number three is, see, the ROI is actually going to be difficult for you to gauge because uh, why that uh, shift happened? Because the Hyderabad Park came into act, okay? Yes. So now if the uh, Chennai and Odisha Park is going to come, again uh, the uh, ROI is going to reduce because first two, three, four years, it takes at least four years to pick up the business, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is where it is, number one. Number, one. number two... We are also having, when we did the India's uh, migration, we also have, uh, you know, a land revaluation of about 300, 400 crores, 385 crores, we had a revaluation. So this, has, this will hit on the, uh, on the return, okay? So my return is going to keep on, uh, while we are going to add uh, parks, the returns are going to fluctuate. So uh, broadly speaking, then you know what is our intention of adding parks on a on a annual or a or a biannual basis? Because uh, just to have an idea, currently we have two in plan. Uh, that's what I, we know. But uh, considering the capital outlay being around 300 crores per park going forward, uh, if at all we plan any new one, uh, uh, let's say if we don't have a government lease as in Odisha, uh, it's all all. Or my question is just regarding this because uh, it's it's not, you know, clear that, you know, what is the ROE uh, that we would want to make but on a continuous basis because as, as investors, you know, that is something that anybody would be looking at very closely. See, uh, we are in the... It'll be hard for, uh, hard for us to predict an ROE number. Um, all we can but say what is, is your I mean, expectation as in? Uh, what do you want to do? It? Okay. As you said, 12% and above. That's what you said. Yeah, I think something uh, along those, those lines is what we hope to do. But uh, anything more than that, we obviously think it's a bonus. Uh, ROE uh. is, again, uh, it's not a static number, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. With the business, we talk about the business. We see the potential in business is there, okay? When you go by the potential in business, okay, when the top line goes, automatically your ROE is going to go up. Let's exactly. see the potential rather than, uh, that's why we are going for a CapEx and new parks. See, we have to go grow our top line in two aspects. 
One is leveraging or swapping the assets of the existing farm. Number one. Mm -hmm. Number mm -hmm. two is where, as Arun has said correctly, we will try to achieve one million footfall, which we were doing before. So with mm -hmm. three parks, we will record, try to record 30, uh, 30 lakhs footfall. Okay, that is point mm -hmm. number one on the existing mm -hmm. asset. With the mm -hmm. new asset coming in, my top line is going to grow. So the mm -hmm. first approach will be how you will reinverse and improve the top line. Okay, mm -hmm. so then mm -hmm. automatically ROI, ROE, or a EBITDA is only a consequent of what you are going to do. It is not a rigid factor. So we we are we are seeing a potential in this business, and we see there is abundant opportunity in the mm -hmm. north of uh, India. So we will be slowly moving into newer parks, and that's the one way of improving your top line. So definitely there's ample opportunity, there's absolutely no doubt, you're, you're in a great business. Part, when you're in an expansion stage, you don't talk much on the ROE now. Yeah, it is only a consequent uh, approach. All right, okay, got it. Thank you, I'll come back again if I have more. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Gaurav Gandhi from Glory Tail Capital Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, congratulations on the excellent state of numbers. Uh, my first question is, uh, sir, do you allow any movie shooting or marriages to happen in the park or do you have any kind of facility or planning to develop any? Yeah, we do. We have a lot of movies which are shot in our parks and uh, weddings, especially in our resort, not in the park as such, but weddings are usually happen in the resort. It's not a very big market for us, the wedding market, but uh, we do get a lot of, uh, especially nowadays people want, uh, you know, dramatic uh, scenery uh, for photos yeah. and <clears throat> media. So because of that, yeah. we do get a lot. No, all right, all right. That's it. That's it from my side. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Darshil Zaveri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, uh, so con first of all, congratulations on our great set of numbers. Uh, so, so, uh, I just wanted to uh, know, uh, so what is our uh, long term, maybe two, three years plan? Like this number of 150 crores nearly is, uh, as you said, we want more footfalls uh, so that, uh, uh, so over the period of time, how much would this be sustainable or what would be our year end target or maybe FY25 target could that be elaborated a bit? Uh, could you have some guidance on that, Pranand? Um, it's hard to give guidance because we'll have new parks uh, by FI25, at least one new park, maybe even two. Um, but uh, one, so uh, based on that, I think we'll have to look at numbers and Satish may be able to share something like a rough calculation with you. Yeah. But I don't so, think yeah. it's more. Our uh, short term objective, as we, as Arun had already suggested, it has to be broken into two parts. One is the uh, existing parts, park, which is uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Kochi, where we will try to achieve a million of footfall. Okay, now we are at around 25 lakhs, that is 2.5 million. Our uh, aim is to go to 3 million footfall with the, the, these three parks at a minimum level. Okay, this is number one. Number two, expansions. When the expansion happen in Chennai and Orissa, it will add up for the first few years, it could add up a million more of a footfall. So we are talking about three to four million footfall in 2025. Uh, okay, sir. And, um, and I'm assuming, sir, with our increased capacities, you'd also be planning to raise prices. So the so next year in quarter one, we would be, we should be better by this number. Yeah, and yeah our prices will go up, yes, for sure. Yeah, we are pricing yeah, this normal. year, we have not gone, it's gone up only about two, three percent compared to FI20. There is headroom for us to grow pricing, so which we will be doing. Oh, See, normally, oh. the top line increases on account of both uh, volume and price. I think we under agree with that. And now, mm -hmm. our focus coming off two years of uh, COVID, our immediate focus was how to improve the footfall and improve the demand. We were focusing on that. Now that we have achieved the first step, we will be looking at the pricing. Pricing we have been doing judiciously. If you have seen the pricing for last one year and one and a half years, if you have followed our pricing, we have slowly improved the pricing and bought it just above the pre-COVID level. Okay. Now we have to work on the inflation part of it. 
ஒன் <laughs> so the uh, the if you see number 1 number 2 we have to be appreciative of the fact that if i have to do a park now and do 5 years down the line it's going to cost me at least two or three times the cost okay we are missing out that okay so if i had developed the park in hyderabad at around 250 crores the same park for me to develop is now 350 400 crores so i think there is an uh, inherent uh cost uh, project cost which is going to go up that we have to so the the ideally the growth has to be from the existing park and the newer projects which we are going to develop and the unit economics is get the ebitda positive in the second year okay okay um, thank you so much for that answer on the question thank you so much and all the best sir thank you thank you A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Ron Sen, individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, are you progressing? I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. I'm sorry to interrupt. One moment. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, are you? Uh, so, are you okay? I'm sorry to interrupt the process of this service allow me Why is there a disturbance? One second. Yeah, is it it's clear I guess. Can you go? Hello Mr. Sen? Yes, sir. Shall I go ahead? Yeah. Okay. Uh thank you. So uh Arun uh, are we looking at being an operator of some of the ailing parks of India is that a model you'd like to explore uh, given your expertise of operations and having an in-house team so some kind of a revenue share model or an asset light strategy in future yeah, we are exploring uh-huh. that yeah we have not uh, i mean something that we are definitely exploring we have had requests from other parks to do this but we haven't found the right fit yet whenever we find it we will definitely look at that also Okay okay and uh, my second question was uh, uh, any other vectors of growth uh, that wonderla is exploring i understand during covid i think you did try a bit on the food delivery or food uh, something on the food space but i think that was rolled back uh, but anything in the online gaming space or maybe increasing the resort offering uh, given the three largest parks that you have your enough space left over there so any thoughts over there Yeah, so we are this year we're going to do some experiments on our resort uh, project, and you know we're going to expand our existing resort in Bangalore in a few different directions. Uh, you know, in terms of adding more things to do for people, adding more um, uh, you know thrill uh, and adventure uh, element to the whole resort, and probably re-theming uh, and uh, redoing some of our F and B. So, so those kind of things we are going to do this year. and based on how that does uh, and how it improves our occupancy and revenues of the resort in tanglo then we'll take a uh, call on doing a similar or maybe a larger one in hyderabad and we can do a similar one in uh, you know in um, cochin uh, we can do uh, one in um, chennai we can do one in uh, bhubaneswar so so that obviously is something that we can also look at yeah. all right all right thank so you so the resort we are looking at one vector then we are definitely looking at uh, digital and online uh, you know uh, offering for uh, like how can we um, make wonderla relevant in the digital uh, space in terms of whether it's gaming or uh, virtual reality and augmented reality which are uh, i mean something that we've already 
worked on in, uh, in some fashion in our past, right? But we are all obviously looking out to see how how else we can use it and how uh, you know how it can augment our revenues. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you for that. Just one last yeah. question: Any update on the Goa uh, state project? So we <laughs> this year we have not really looked at other. I mean, we are just concentrating on. Chennai and Orissa, but we are also talking to a few other state governments. Um, you know, we are definitely, uh, we want to build a pipeline of uh, projects uh, that we can, you know, slowly go out and execute. So, I mean, we are always, uh, we are definitely talking to Goa, we are talking to Gujarat, we are talking to a bunch of different states, and uh, whenever there is some announcement, we will definitely you know, keep you posted. Thank you. Thank you so much for answering this question, and wishing you all the best for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Rahul Jaju from our consultant. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, yeah, congratulations, sir, for a good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is, when you say Chennai and Odisha Park coming in, how much revenue you are expecting from these parks? And uh, follow-up question to these, what do you think about the spike in demand? Is this a pent-up demand or we expect similar growth in future? Uh, so, you know, the park in uh, Orissa, we, we are doing a light version. So, you know, we are going to spend about between 100 and 120 crores there. And uh, our ticket price also will be probably about 60% of uh, what we charge in our larger park. So, maybe about 600 rupees, 600, 700 rupees. Um, so, that's the way that pr pricing will work. And if we get about roughly about, uh, you know, half a million visitors in half a year. So you can do the math on what is the revenue potential. And then that will keep growing. And we should get to, again, about maybe 800,000, 8 lakhs to about 10 lakhs visitors there also. 8 lakhs is what I think is more realistic in a place like uh, Bhubaneswar. Um, uh, so that is what we are aim, gunning for. Uh, but these are rough calculations. Uh, Chennai will be a bigger park like our existing parks in Bangalore. And uh, so you can do the math from there. Um, um, what else? Was, that was it, right? That was your question, right? Yes, yes. And so my second question is like, as we all can see, inflation is coming in. Everyone is comparing uh, things with inflation. So do you feel like it's going to impact our business also? Not really. We were actually, if you think about it, we've actually increased the price of our FNB and uh, uh, tickets quite a bit in this year itself. They're going to take further price increases and um, because we don't have a direct comparable uh, for our offering and I think pricing is, uh, has always been some, one of our strong, strong points. We can, yeah, you know, we can increase our prices and not worry about our declining footfall. Um, so we are definitely looking at further price hikes. Okay, okay. Thank you. And so my very last question, uh, what is our current overall capacity utilization in different parks? And what is the current capacity utilization? It's hard to predict that right now because our capacity, theoretical capacity and uh, what we can actually keep uh, is, uh, but uh, theoretically we can have 10,000 visitors per day per park, uh, but we are probably at about 5,000 or 6,000. What is our Q1 average, uh, Satish? No, sir, uh, in a year we do about 25, not Q1, no, no, no. no. I'm saying this Q1, what will be the average? Uh, the Q1 average will be uh, more than about 4,000 rupees. 4,000. Yeah, so we can still add more people if we want. Okay, okay. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. 4, yeah. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their phone at this time. We take the next question from the line of Mr. TVK Vivek Kumar from Best Power Research. Please go ahead, sir. I don't know. This is, I, I, during the COVID, you have just mentioned that we are working on how to uh, 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 create a brand awareness even when um, uh, visitors outside in their life, like not when they're not in the park. So are we thinking anything to do in those terms? Like you said that we want to be relevant throughout the try to be relevant more times than when they're just inside the bar. We are trying something on that. Like either you said or this, uh, when you, I don't exactly remember who said it, but during the COVID, you mentioned that you are thinking very deeply on these things. So anything yeah, no, on we that? Did that. No, that is actually, we did that and we've been very successful in that. That's why we got this kind of footfall, right? 
um i think the way we do our marketing is completely different now uh, i can't give you too much detail is all i can tell you is that we do mostly digital marketing and we do very precise targeting of people who are even thinking about going out somewhere and we are able to target them very accurately and uh, give uh, ads and offers so that's how our marketing is working now so that's uh, definitely so if people are thinking about an outing we should be in their consideration so we do a lot of things for that yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, and all the best. Sir. Thank you. We take the next question from the line of Meet Jagnani from PS Associates. Please go ahead. Mr. Meet, your line is in talk mode, sir. You may please go ahead. Uh, hi, Arun. Uh, thanks for the opportunity, and congratulations for very good set of number. Uh, so my first question is, uh, uh, if this uh, Chennai project does not materialize in say one or two quarter, so are we looking at uh, any other uh, uh, second option, or we will go ahead only with uh, Orissa for next two years? We are definitely looking at other options also. Like I mentioned, we are always looking out for new projects. So if Chennai doesn't work out, we look at something else. I think there are always at least two three projects in our pipeline. We want to keep it like that, and we are trying to grow that pipeline now. Uh, i think there are a lot more opportunities and uh, a lot of states are looking at investment in the tourism sector so we are do- talking to a lot of state governments to see whether we can tie up and uh, do a new project so that helps us reduce our capex also okay and uh, the second question is regarding price hike are we looking at the price hike across uh, all the parks or uh, is it at uh, any given one park I uh, can't tell you. I mean, but definitely we are looking at price hikes uh, across the board at some point in the, the second half of this year. Uh, maybe not this quarter, but next quarter definitely we'll look at more price hikes. Okay. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations for nice set of numbers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Abhishek Shah, individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello, am I audible? Yes. Yeah. Hello. Good evening, sir. Uh, and congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, so I have a couple Thank of you. questions. Uh, can you put some light on uh, the park-wise performance? And I see you are frequently adding uh, rides in the park. So what is your plan ahead on that? We always uh, uh, keep adding rides uh, to the park. That's something that we've been doing for a very long time. uh every year we roughly spend about 10% of our top line on adding attractions to our uh, uh you know our park so that is definitely one thing um then if you look at our footfalls i think uh, highest growth in footfall happened in this quarter for hyderabad so i think almost 30 uh, 36% growth uh in footfall uh, and i think 34 1 per cent 34% growth in um uh coaching uh, and what is the percentage growth in bangalore seven no? sir, I, i will tell sir so hyderabad uh, we got 39% growth in footfall 39 mm. yes 46% growth in uh, revenue and in kochi we got uh, 38% growth in footfall and 34% growth in revenue and in bangalore it was 7% growth in footfall and 12% growth in revenue so all the three parks, bangalore is already running yeah bangalore is run, already running almost to uh, very full uh, even before covid but there is lot of headroom for us to grow in the other two parks and that has happened that for your thing okay and uh, so uh, so how frequently you keep adding as in on quarterly monthly basis or yearly every year we will add something yeah okay and uh, one more uh in last quarter you had mentioned uh, a satellite uh, model for the new park so how much uh, pricing we will be uh, keeping for that park is there about 60% of our uh, full uh, size park pricing okay okay and uh, thank you that's it from my side thank you sir thank you We take the next question from the line of Mr. Anil Jain from Equity Passion Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for the great set of numbers. I wanted to know, can you throw some light on the reality of our business? 
I'm sorry, I can't hear you properly. Yeah, I just wanted to know seasonality in our business in terms of uh, divided into quarter one, two, three, four in terms of football and revenue. So, so quarter one and three are uh, stronger quarters. Quarter two and four tend to be slightly weaker. But that's changing now with our digital marketing, I think. Uh, but of course, quarter two will be weaker because of the rains and you know opening of schools and colleges. That has an impact on football. So, the, the, roughly, that's how it works. Uh, roughly, can you uh, give some uh, out of 100? Suppose 100 days of football in a year, first quarter, second, uh, can it be allocated into one, two, three, and four quarters? Yes, you. I'm sorry to interrupt, sir. We are losing your audio. We can't hear you. Hello? Mr. Ayan, could you be a is little audible? Audible, please? Yeah, it's audible now. Yeah, it's better. Please go. Suppose there is a total of 100 numbers in a year. Can you, from your past experience, how much is in quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four? Just a mm. approximate. Uh, Satish? Huh? Oh, sir, yes, yes. Uh, see, uh, the quarter one is the main quarter for us, and we record about 40% of our revenue during okay. quarter one, okay, which okay. is about 10 lakhs footfall is what, 9 to 10 lakhs footfall we achieved during quarter one. And this okay. year we have achieved little more than that. And uh, quarter two and quarter four together is about another 30%, and quarter three is about 30%. Quarter three, because the season, quarter three, if you take it, it's again a season. So, so Q1 and Q3 will be good numbers, and uh, Q2 and Q4 will be slightly uh, moderated. Okay, means two quarters uh, combined, first and third, approximately 70 percent. Yeah, roughly about uh, 65 70 percent. Yes, okay, got it, got it. And uh, in your team uh, part. Your football uh, is higher than pre-COVID level, and but your revenue has not uh, increased in since the bank. What's the reason? Can't hear you. Hello. In your coach, hello. In coaching plan, park. Hello. Is it audible now? Not very hello. clear. Hello now. Hello. Sir, are you, are you connected yeah. from your head? Hello, is it audible now? No, we can't hear you properly. Sir, so I would request you to switch to your handset, sir. If Hello, is head. it audible now? Yeah, it's better. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in your coaching uh, park, uh, from pre-COVID level, school has increased 38%, but your revenue has increased by 34%. Can you throw some light on that? Uh, sir, uh, can I group football? Yeah, there's some group footfalls in that, that's right. Yes, see, uh, the uh, revenue of the R2 is a, a factor of uh, the job mix between retail and uh, group footfall. If you take okay. the Kochi Park per se, we okay. had uh, for, uh, I mean, uh, the back at uh, 19 is to 81 in Q1 FY20. And now the footfall was 47 and about 50-50 in group and uh, uh, Walk in. So that okay. has reduced the revenue to an extent. Okay, got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, sir. A reminder to all the participants if you wish to ask a question, you may press star and one on your touchstone phone. We take the next question from the line of Stragar Sa from Sunshine Capital. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, sir, can you share the details of? Tickets to non tickets ARPU? Yeah. Uh, if you take uh, AR ARPU, uh, it has two components, which is uh, ATP, which is average ticket price, is at 987. And SPH, which is a combination of uh, SMB and retail, is about 313. Both put together, we have recorded 1300. Okay, okay. And sir, uh, you earlier mentioned like you have switched from traditional to digital marketing. So can you sh uh, share like how much marketing uh, expenditure we have every quarter against the revenue? Our uh, percentage okay. of revenue to market expense is about 8% normally. 8 to 9% is our uh, ratio. Okay, okay. 
And so la- last is like how soon we can see the Chennai Park coming in and the taxation matter that uh, can be resolved like? Hopefully within the next one quarter. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. We take the next question from the line of Gaurav Gandhi from Glory Tail Capital Management. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, Arun, sir, can you share uh, me your understanding regarding how many times the same person visits the park? If he visits once, uh, then whether he comes back or what is the time period? Usually we get a maximum of two, two, two visits per year is usually what we get. There are heavy users who come 10-15 times a year, but that's a very small number. Most of the people maybe once or twice a year. Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Sachin from Swan Investments. Please go ahead, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. Good afternoon and congrats for a very good set of numbers. Uh, two, three questions. Uh, one, in your presentation mentions that you have a lot of surplus land in existing park itself. So, are we looking at adding any more capacity or any more rides uh, at the existing parks and what type of capex we are looking there? Yeah, we are constantly going to add uh, newer attractions. So, we are planning some attractions to be added in Hyderabad. Right now, that is our smallest park and newest park. So, it needs uh, some addition of rights because now we are getting huge crowds there also. So, so some expansion will be happening. Some FNB uh, expansion will be happening. Bangalore is going to see some expansion. So will Cochin. So all of the, all three parts current this year we will see a lot of expansion and refurbishment. Will it be minor capex or is it like fifteen twenty crores sir? All three put together. Yeah, yeah it will be in that range only. You're not going to spend too much. Yeah. Sure. Uh, secondly, I think currently your ratio of uh, ticket to non-ticket is like 75-25 ballpark. So what is the ratio like globally and uh, is there a scope to improve this ratio substantially in favor of non-ticket? Yeah, so of course, there. I mean, uh, the global ratio is 60-40 and we are at 75-25, so we should be able to get there soon. Uh, so that is part of the expansion that we are doing in our FNB also. Uh, we want to change our FNB offerings uh, to more value-added offerings. Uh, again, aided by our digital transformation, so we understand what kind of people are buying what kind of food. So that intelligence, uh, you know, we need to do some work on that. Uh, hopefully, within the next year, we will that system will also be up, and we should be able to, you know, at least give uh, more uh, varied offerings in FNB and merchandise. And so, so a lot of expansion is happening in that area. Yes. But uh, do you think over the medium to long term we can also aspire to get the global benchmark or because of the uh, demographic? Uh, those yeah. are developed country metrics we will not be able to achieve. I think, uh, you know, develop, uh, like, I think um, the sign of a developed country uh, when you have uh, people spending as much as, as on food as they are uh, spending on tickets. That happens, I think, in Western, you know, it's, it's a, maybe in India it will take some more time, but I think eventually, yes, we will also get there. So over a three to five, term. but over a three to yeah, five years, three to five years, we would want to uh, increase it to like say seventy thirty, but sixty forty, I think it'll, it'll take probably a little more time. Sure, sure. And you also mentioned that you know typically uh, at good times, your each of the parks get to a mil- million visitors every year, uh, but you also mentioned that the capacity is much larger, like ten thousand, and we know there are seasonal variations. But in general, uh, what do you think we need to do so that you know uh, we can improve from this a million million a year over a two three year to say like 1.4 1.5 million per part? So I think yeah, that means we'll have to utilize our capacity much more smartly, like how airlines use do that, right? They will oversell some capacity or they will uh, do some dynamic pricing. They will do. There's a lot of tech uh, element that will come in if you want to do that and to improve your capacity. So we, we are also planning to do uh, things like that so that we, we are more efficient with our ticketing. Yeah, so we, we still can even call it as revenue management or yield management. So do we have a, what, uh-huh. we are investing significantly in terms of some software or are we boosting the, you know, digital market? Yeah, we will. Can you give us some yeah, more insights what we are trying to do on that? You know, we are developing our own... Uh, software for that, uh, our ticketing software, that will be completely bespoke because it's a, nobody else has that kind of uh, uh, software. So we have to develop it uh, pretty much uh, in-house. 
Uh, but of course, it will have elements of CRM and uh, Salesforce automation, those kind of things. So we are building that entire stack, uh, but it will take us about a year to finish. It. And uh, hopefully, we can also look at dynamic pricing for our ticketing also once that is up. Sure. And just one last question, sir. You know, we heard that in Goa, there's a new industrial airport coming in, and the government wants to develop that more as an entertainment hub. So, are we looking at any options near the new industrial airport in Goa in terms of opening a new park or excluding any opportunity? There? We are talking to the Goa government. Uh, we might be doing something there. Right now, it's uh, just, yeah, just in discussion. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Mr. Anuj Sharma from M3 Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, Arun, you did say that uh, you know the Chennai uh, uh, Chennai outcome should be out within the quarter or so. So the probability of us getting it or not, uh, it's it's a zero or one scenario, or there could be a scenario wherein you know lower LBT is considered and we'll be fine with it. Uh, I think it should get done. Um, most likely, uh, I would say with a 80% confidence that it should get done, but then we don't know. Uh, nothing is certain, 100%. So that's the way we are looking at it. We are reasonably sure that it will go through. Okay. At the terms which we 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 have always intended for, correct? Ah yes. All right, all right. And 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 uh, uh, and this is based on your assessment as to how things are moving uh, in the in the bureaucracy, correct? Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, sir. We take the next follow-up question from the line of Mr. Meet Jadnani, PS Associates. Please go ahead. Yeah, Arun, uh, just wanted to get an idea on your uh, expense side. So, could we uh, maintain the current uh, run rate of expenses or uh, could we see any increase in expense deducting uh, 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 depreciation which will uh, increase with uh, uh, the tax? See, when we do new capex, obviously expenditure will be different. But on a steady state, I think uh, for our existing parts, our expenditure, I think, should be under control. Okay. Thank you, sir. We take the next question from the line of Neha Sharma from Pearl Global Investments. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good evening, sir. And good congratulations evening. on the good set of numbers. I just have one question. Uh, can you give some uh, guidance on the football and the revenues uh, for the coming quarters as possible? Uh, I don't think we can give revenues. I think all we can say is we should do better than FI20. We'll leave it at that. And um, as uh, you know, I think, but of course, we'll probably do a little better than that also. Um, yeah, I think we are definitely hoping to uh, beat uh, FY20 numbers uh, by a considerable margin this year. That's, hope, that's what we're hoping to do. Okay, okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for the day. I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you and over to you. Thank you all for attending our uh, uh, you know, earnings call for the first quarter. Um, looking forward to you know more exciting uh, news and uh, updates uh, from under the holidays. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Security, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.